Focus. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Welcome to the Knowledge Drop. Focus, thank you for having me, brother. This is Paul One, Style Elements Master Squad, BVDs, Beyond Violence and Disorder, Death Style Rockers, and the whole nine. All right, to all my crews and families, and a crew that I really rarely mention. It's from the 80s that I'm a part of since 86. And uh, we're called Lords, Legends of Rare Designs, and that's my writing crew, but we were all a hip hop crew. And the brothers are still around with members all over. So I just want to send out Lords because I haven't really shouted out Lords in a very long time. So except when I do pieces and stuff and I rarely do pieces. So Lords, big shout out. And yeah, welcome to the Knowledge Drop. Let's do it. All right. So each one teach one. What is the background story? Why did you start using it? What was the process? Why did you choose it? And how, how did it find you? Okay, well... Each one teach one, how the question of each one teach one, how did I start using it? Well, the, first of all, the quote is an African American proverb. It's a quote that was um, said, um, you know, when in the slavery days, when, when slaves were not allowed to read and write and stuff like that. Um, if, if somebody taught one to read, um, someone to read the, uh, The other would teach the other and the other would teach the other. And, and then the quote was each one teach one. When I heard the quote, it was probably when it made an impact on me that I was like, yo, those that means something 100%. Because I probably heard it before that, but never, never captured, never stuck to me. Um, I would say probably about 93 92, 93, in between 92, 93, and 94 in those years um, is when it impacted me in a very, very uh, big way. Um, I heard it in a few songs, you know what I mean? I heard it in a few songs and some lyrics, and I was like, yo, then um, being a part of Zulu, Zulu Nation, it's mentioned as well in Zulu um, Nation, um, you know, some of the brothers and sisters will say it. It's, it's it, you know, I, it teaches you, you know, they refer books to you and things to read, to, to study your heritage, to find out where you're from and what you, you know, there's many things that Zulu do um, that, you know, that helped you kind of research and then you, you stumble upon it. And um, yeah, it, it kind of, I saw it, stumbled upon it. Um, I started hearing people like, uh, Um, phew, so many people first person comes to mind is Guru but I already had known the quote before that Guru, Guru saying it um, uh, Rockefeller you know Rock B Girl Rockefeller she was saying it um, a lot, there was a lot of people kind of referencing it and um, but it was kind of people were saying it but others were hearing it but it didn't seem like it had the impact kind of going in one ear and out the other it was it didn't have the impact for other people um like it had for some of us like it, it really means to really share you know there's no school for us there's no there's no studios or anything now there is you know with beautiful you know people like yourself and other people that have formed camps and and places to go to get the knowledge and stuff but in, in my day It was in the streets, you know, and you, you, you learn it from one person, you learn another thing from another person, you go to a different neighborhood, another person teaches you a different knowledge. And I think um, just in general, that, that, you know, that way of learning, um, when you start getting older, you start realizing that's the way you're actually learning. It's each one teach one. That's actually how you're actually learning. You're not getting it you know, going, no one's really telling you, um, like, if you're not going to school and stuff, there's, you know, teachers will, will refer books to you in school and universities and say, oh, you should go here, or you should go to the library and check this book out and that book. Um, in the streets, you have that, but, um, but it's really kind of word of mouth and music and, and just cats, Yeah, music, lyrics, um, then up through the lyrics you hear, maybe a reference of a book, a reference of a title of a book, um, stuff like that. Then you get curious about that book if you feel like, you know, start reading and stuff. And then you, you um, how do you say, 
you get the book, then you read about it, and then you just start finding out more and more and more of what it actually really means and and why it really kind of impacted me. You know, I just started realizing, like, yeah, it really, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, people use words as a, they become popular in hip hop, and they seem to become cliches. It seems to lose its value. Certain things like. When people say, yeah, hip hop's about peace, unity, love, and having fun and this, that. But there's a lot of cats out there that I believe that don't really see the power in those words and how it's really up to them to, to make those make those words alive. Each one teach one was the same thing. It's like everyone can hear it and, and say, Oh yeah, that's dope. But how many really take it to make it alive and to make those words actually really mean something? You know what I mean? When it really impacts you inside, that's when you give it, you start giving it more power because you start getting involved and start representing it at what it actually means. And that, that is, that is um, um, when it imprinted into my soul and my heart is when I started to actually push it and and really I, I believe in the words you know I still believe to this day each one teach one or each one reach one um until this day I will never claim it it's not mine it's like you know how like focus you say you know there's people say oh uh props to pull one or whatever and in reality no I don't claim it you know it, it was way before me but I can see how People m might relate it to me because I really pushed it, but it's not me. I pushed it because I believe in what the source is about. I believe in what it really means, you know, and I guess people related it because it impacted them the same way when they heard how much I was pushing it and, and how honest it was, you know, and that that made an impact for people to listen, even though it's been in lyrics for decades, you know, maybe people weren't listening to the lyrics. Maybe they weren't and didn't have the impact it did until somebody else passed it down. Same thing happened to me. When I kept hearing it or reading it, it had the impact on me. And I was like, yo, we got to push this because this is what it's about. You know, the suffering and struggle of life is, is like, and, and our hip hop culture or our street culture and everything that it comes with, we should um, embrace it and share it as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, that's, I guess that's about it. Yeah, dope, dope. You know? um, how do you live those words and what do those words really mean to you in your personal life? Ooh. Um, wow. Living those words is simple. Exactly what I'm doing right now with you. You're asking me questions. We build. I ask you questions. You build. Um, you basically get involved, get into it. Like James Brown says, you share knowledge, you gain knowledge and that knowledge you gain, you share again, you constantly research, you can't constantly reevaluate. Um, you, I believe you pass it in a, uh, it should never be passed down. I believe in a forceful way. Um, it can push people away and I want people to feel embraced You know, even, you know, I, I would like for people to feel welcoming and that I'm an approachable, approachable person. So the way I approach it to share is just by being myself and being an approachable person. And, and you know, and I'll engage in a conversation with you and you will have my full attention and I will search. If I don't have the answer, I will search for that answer because I want to know the answer too. I will search for it and then I'll pass it to a friend of yours if I can't get a hold of you and make sure that it gets passed down to make sure I answered your question and, and wherever I got the answers from as well, make sure I pass that down. So um, I, I find that um, the way is the way I would share it, you know, the way I share it. Um, what it means to me, well, each one teach one is self-explanatory, man. There's no documentation, really. You know how hard it is to get a straight story from so many people involved from back in the day. Everybody kind of has their own stories. They were all young. They were all youngsters. 
They were all teenagers and kids. So everybody has their way of, of remembering how they lived it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and all that. So, um, go the each one teach one for me is a really, it's like treasure hunting. It's like you're looking for treasures and when you get it, you cherish it and you want to pass that on. You know what I'm saying? It's like looking for treasures. And when you have the honor to talk to somebody that gives you a key that opens up something here to make you understand more of what you actually do, but you don't know how to articulate it, but you actually do it. Um, that's a beautiful thing when they give you that key and that that's somebody passing down. So it's each one teach one to me that to me, that's what it means it, in itself. You know what I'm saying? It's passing down keys to open up doors to help everybody keep connecting and going around. You know what I'm saying? So like this canvas behind me, all that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Damn. if that makes sense. Hell yeah. All right. Um, living that mentality for so many years, since 92, 93, um, or, or, of course longer, but having that state of mind and that aspect in, in as a slogan. What do you think teaching has given you sharing, sharing your passion with other people? It has impacted so many lives in, in the world, but what has it given you personally? Oh, personally? Well, I'm still learning. Um, that's a good question. I never thought of it like really. It's given me, I can tell you what hip hop is, you know, it, it's... Wow, that's a great question because there's so many ways I can answer that. It's given me light, straight up, a light inside. Um, it's given me a voice, you know. Um, it's helped me fight a lot of demons, you know. It's given me confidence, um, expression of how to let out what I have inside. Um, confront a lot of fears and able to express a lot of joy that you know there's a lot of dimness in the world that a lot of shame kind of in a way a lot of people kind of try to put you down and that kind of turns off the light you know in a way it's, it's kind of heavy I think um sharing information has helped me understand more about myself having to answer questions for people of why I do a certain thing that I never put thought in, I just do it, then that has given me an awareness of a consciousness of what I'm doing, having to share that before I just do it. I, I could, I, I know the consciousness, but I couldn't explain it. Now by, you know, by sharing information so long, um, and more and more questions arising, it, it has taught me how to find ways to articulate and answer those questions. And that has given me a better awareness and, under, and understanding and understanding myself. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Maybe one more. Um, how do you see longevity as a teacher and a builder and as an, as an educator yourself? You've been into it so many, for so many decades. And the process, like you said, you're still learning. And we're all still learning, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you see the up-and-coming decades? How long are you going to stay with that mentality? Are you going to retire or not? <laughs> mm, I don't know, brother. I, I don't even... That's a good question, if I'm going to retire or not. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I don't think about it. I hear music. And if I'm in the mood, I get down. You know what I mean? Like, you know, or I get up. Better yet, let's say get up. You know what I'm saying? I get up to get down, you know? So I think uh, as long as this machine is still physically moving and able to move, I think um, I'm going to groove all my life. I think I'll be in a wheelchair tapping my foot or popping my head even when I can't uh, physically move anymore, you know, the big stuff anymore. I, I, this is embedded in me. It's, it's my DNA, you know. Um, I know a lot of people might think, oh, that sounds cliche, but no, nah, I've been a dancer all my life, 
all my life. It's all I know. And I don't need to be as dynamic as I was. I don't need to, um, how do I say that the art of longevity for me is uh, I don't get bitter um, of what I used to be able to do. I do miss it, but I am happy what I am allowed to do and still be able to do now. And I'm looking forward to see what I'm allowed to do and be able to do next year and the year after that. You understand what I'm saying? And I, 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 I want to be content with that, be happy with that expression, as long as it's an honest expression, as long as it's honest with myself. You know what I'm saying? That to me, that's, um, that keeps me going. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, of course, without saying you have to take care of your body without saying you have to take care of your mind. You have to take care of your heart and soul. You understand? You got to meditate. You got to pray. You got to eat, eat right. Be positive right here in the mind. I mean, there's a lot of confusion in, in life right now and, and it's always been there, but it, it affects us when it affects us. And, uh, when it does affect us, we seem to deteriorate a little bit, you know, and then we have to recharge and refine ourselves. And that's part of the lesson. And that's part of the teachings to go longer and fight harder because that's what hip hop is about as well. It's about fighting, you know, each one teach one is about fighting. It's about getting our message across over and over and over again. You understand what I mean? That's what, the, that's why the words are so powerful. It's like for all the non-believers out there or all the people that are trying to hold us back, don't, might not think what we do is professional, might not think what we do um, um, has value or whatever. The longer we're involved, the more proof it shows the world that this is something very valuable to us and it's medicine for many of us and that medicine you know keeps me afloat keeps me healing and it's making me last longer if that makes sense if i didn't talk in circles i hope i didn't talk in circles i'm kind of nervous man i never get nervous in the news <laughs> <laughs> amazing yes and i guess that's all about it so any final words last shout outs and let's wrap, wrap it up That's it. All right. Well, nah, man. Thank you, Focus, brother. Keep doing your thing. B-boy, bgirldojo.com, right? Dot com. Yeah. Keep it up. Don't stop. I know for a lot of people that are watching this, they have, they might, if you don't run a business or run a, a website and haven't done anything like that to keep it up, to keep it up with content every day, to not get lost in the shuffle, to constantly create concepts, to keep people engaged and involved um, on new lessons so you don't get bored as an individual as well because having a business can be very draining and all that stuff and, 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 and you know, trying to come up with concepts and emails and, and coding and, and developing the, the website and all that. I just want to tell people, man, support my brother Focus and all those that are, are moving up into the education department and trying to form great ed educational um, avenues for people to learn. Support it because there's a lot of work involved. But also, anybody watching this, keep an open mind, even for my brother Focus. You know, I've always told you this, Focus. Keep an open mind. Because one person says it a certain way doesn't mean that it's written in stone and that's the only way. There are eight million stories in the naked state city, just like Curtis Blow says, right? Eight million stories in the naked city. You know, like, and all those stories teach you something. So keep an open mind, y'all, and like, uh, and, and an open heart and stay humble no matter how good you get. Um, don't lose sight or why you fell in love with this culture in the first place. Never lose sight of that, you guys. Also, yeah, remember why you got involved. Put yourself into the place of when you had only one move or when you saw breaking for the first time 
or popping or locking or, or freestyle. Just the energy of it when you first saw it and you needed to do it, but you didn't know what you were doing. But every time you did it, you were the happiest kid in the world. Before all the other politics got involved and kind of killed your buzz sometimes, remember those good times and those memories because that energy, that spirit is what it's about. It's about that fun and that expression. Never lose sight of why you got involved in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Keep on rocking, you guys. Confront the challenges that are ahead. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Peace. Uh, yeah. And that's what it is.